It I is. Know. It's time, time for new, new products. products. Okay, first up, what's this? Okay, so this is actually something that we had in stock, and we're gonna have a, we, we got again. Polar kind of argued with us, and they're like, "Well, you have to do an educational pack." It's a, a polar heart strap, so some people are familiar with these from like there's watches or sometimes use exercise equipment. We'll have a tutorial for this um, shortly in the learning system, but basically, it's it's a DIY kit where you can. Um, connect the strap to you just like normal underneath your uh, web cage and then the receiver which is a little green square there underneath um, it will automatically when you power it with like three volts it will connect to the uh, the transmitter and it'll pulse with your pu with your pulse heart rate your it'll blink uh, LED with your heart rate this is a, a way to do heart rate calculation without having any wires or clips or anything it's completely wireless we'll have a demo for it but anyways it's back in the store some people are waiting for it you can pick one up it's really easy to use but we'll also have a tutorial shortly okay next up um, we have an update to the um, the, the tour uh, the onion pie. Yes. Uh, what is the onion pie, lady? Make your own Tor gateway. So this is a, a really cute little thing. You plug Ethernet into your Raspberry Pi and then the, a Wi-Fi adapter on the other side and it yeah. will automatically create a Wi-Fi access point called onion pie. When you connect to it, all your traffic through that will be uh, Tor routed, it'll, uh, onion routed through the Tor network so you don't have to worry about your IP address being leaked out. Um, it's a kind of cool project. We have a really cool tutorial. We had one yeah. with a big antenna. Uh, we ran out of big antenna Wi-Fi adapters. We're getting more, but then some people were said, "Hey, I also want ones with little, little antenna, so it's like smaller." Because yeah. the range actually isn't—it's not a huge difference in range, yeah. by the way, between the small and the big antenna. And uh, so we put a, a new package. So in if store. you're thinking about dropping some government dock powerpoints, hitting Hong Kong, maybe taking a private jet to uh, Iceland, this might be a product for you. Tor can be handy. Also, <laughs> uh, you can use it when you're paying for stuff in Bitcoin. Yeah, check it out. All right. Next Look at up. you, you are a hacker. Yeah, next up. Okay. What are these? These are some big, that's the small um, seven segment. So hold on, let me light up my right. segments. I'm going to show these John Deere photos first. Okay, right. go ahead. All right, then we're going to go So these are hex segment displays. Oh, a little so, blurry there, maybe. Oh, I know, I know. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Okay, come on, you can do it, you can do it. Okay, they're so bright. Okay, they're crazy bright, but it's basically hex segments, and you can kind of maybe see, instead of just seven segments, you can actually do like full characters. Um, they're really cute. We have single digits. This one is 0.8 inches tall. And then we have one that is totally massive. Two and a half, 2.3 inches tall. One second. Get this breadboard going. Okay. Oh my God, so bright. Crazy huge digits. So yeah, you can uh, have a good time here with this gigantic digit. Um, we don't have a driver or backpack for it. Um, we will have something you can use soon, but you can also use some uh, 74HC 595s or other shift registers yeah. to drive this awesome display. This is actually the same digits that are used in the um, the clock from yeah. Evil Mad Science. Whose so name I cannot remember off the top of my head. It's the really big one. Yeah, we sell it. We're tired. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Whatever, it's a gigantic clock. <laughs> yeah. Same size digits. Check it out. Build your own something or other. Okay. Get it. Huge. Next up. Glowy. Server party. Yeah, so I'm going to just show a couple photos again. Um, yeah. Whoa. Sorry about that. Oh, I wasn't. You know what? Let's not. Let's skip this one real quick. Good, yeah. It, yeah, and then we'll do the service at the end. Okay. Um, let's go to this. Let's go to the OLED. Okay. Yeah, the, oh, well, we got the accelerometer. Or was that last week? Oh, the accelerometer was this week. Yeah. Oh man, I forgot to bring okay, it. Okay, well, why don't you just talk about well, it? We'll talk about it because it's actually yeah. hard to. You're not you can't, see I'm not going to demo it. Yeah. So this accelerometer is um, it's an analog output accelerometer. People who know the ADXL 335, uh, this is the big sister to the 335. This one is a really cool sensor. I, I don't know what people are going to use it for, but whatever it is, it's really fast because this is a 200 G sensor. Most accelerometers go up to like maybe 16 Gs. Uh, three to eight Gs is really common. Uh, 16 Gs is maybe 32 Gs. Ooh, wow. This is 200. This is used yeah. to like test race cars and rockets, and we're like, this is awesome. So we bought 100 chips, and we uh, made a breakout, and uh, it has a four mounting holes, because whatever it is, it's going. And uh, check it out. It's got analog output, and it's a cool sensor. I don't know. I just want to see, I want to see the demo project that people use this for. Yeah. That's just so cool. Okay. 200 Gs. Next Triple up. access. Any, any direction, 200 Gs. Let's hit um, this, and then we'll do the servos. Okay, so the OLED. Okay, these are the OLEDs. I'm going to... This is a um, updated... 
updated, but it's updated enough that I'm like, yeah, it's, it's kind of new. So we had these color OLEDs, and um, we had them in a different form factor, and we, you had to actually wire up the three volt level shifter separately. And then we kind of realized everyone was using SPI. We should just make it more compact, put the level shifter on the back. We also improved the power supply a little bit, and um, I'll show it on the overhead because it's quite pretty. Um, Look at that. Yeah, it actually shows up really nicely, although it's really small. I don't know if you can. It's really bright too, but you can see there's a there's sort of a flower. There you go. So yeah, you can see it's refreshing at almost the same rate, but there's a, a, a daffodil image on there. And uh, the cool thing about OLEDs is they're they're extremely visible from um, any angle because they're OLEDs and they don't have a backlight, so they're actually quite low power. Yeah. And um, the image is is quite bright and very vivid. So we have black and white OLEDs, and this is um, a really nice little color OLED. So it's an updated product. Okay. And then um, on to the, the star of the show here. Uh, this is our servo shield. You guys are going to love this. Yeah, so, so this is. First, some photos. So, yeah, it's a servo shield for Arduino. We already have the servo driver, and people really like the servo driver, but we saw a lot of people trying to use it with Arduino, and we're like, well, we can make it really easy to use with an Arduino by shieldifying it, making, you know, making the power supply kind of work a little better with an Arduino. Yeah. And it's stackable. So you, it only uses two pins. You can stack up to like 90 of these shields. 90, so like 90 times 16. It's a lot. It's, it's like a thousand. It's basically, yeah, like 60, 63. You can stack 63. I wonder who's going to do it first. I, I know, that's a really thing. tall stack. Yeah. As long as you're powering it, um, it yeah. yeah, it uses I squared C and you can change the address up to 63 different addresses. So yeah, you can stack as many as you okay. want. Great for if you want to drive like 16, 30, 70, 80, 1,000 servos. Sounds like it's servo party time. Servo party time. All right. It's time. Do your thing. The servo party. Whoa. So this is it driving 16 different servos. So you can see the servos plug in here. And you got a little power indicator. But you have to power it separately. So this is a five volt adapter just for powering the servos. I can't hear you over the servos. They drive a lot of, uh, draw a lot of current. But yeah, you can drive all these servos. And the neat thing is the Arduino doesn't actually um, have to do almost anything. It just sends the pulse rate. So it, unlike many servo drivers, where you actually have to constantly send data to the servos, this is free running. So you just set the, the pulse width. And then, the, and then, which takes like almost no time, then the Arduino yeah. can go off and do other things. So this is really good for robotics where you don't want to spend all your time in an interrupt, like moving the servos and making sure they don't jitter, which is really common when you're doing software servo. Mm -hmm. This is no jitter. It's like perfect. It's yeah. exactly the same resolution every time. And it's like super fine. You can actually use it with digital servos too. It can, it can do much higher than 50 hertz. But I'm assuming most people I recorded a servo party in, in John's studio over here. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I got I got Let's this. Go servo party. This is a pre-recorded servo party. That's a nice servo party. Yeah, look at that. So yeah, I can drive any servos, five, six volt servos, and yeah, you can stack them. I designed this so you can use the, the right angle headers for stackability, and there's a little proto area also since there's extra space. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, this thing is. This is that's a party. Server party time. That's a party. I turned it off because it's. Okay, and with that, new products. Yay! Whew.